So once again, Maine covers up a police brutality incident. Um, and this one is so bad, um, like so many others I've covered. It's just so clear that this officer should have been fired immediately. But not only was he not fired, the police chief, his police chief at the time, Michael Soschuk, who now is the Maine state um, police commissioner for the entire state of Maine, covered it up and gave this guy multiple, um, uh, um, like, merits and, and accommodations that same year for an incident that happened in the old port in Portland, Maine. Um, this is absolutely despicable. This officer should have been fired. And when you hear the details of this, I think your blood will boil like mine does. Portland, Maine settles brutality lawsuit for $10,000. The only reason that they were able to settle this is because the guy who the officer, Officer McCluskey, um, um, hurt was, uh, or McCuster, McCuster hurt, um, was, a, um, was addicted to drugs. And so he... Um, the $10,000 uh, appealed to him. But they covered this up and they did everything they could to make sure the officers were not held accountable. The city of Portland will pay Edward Lund of Wyndham a $10,000 to settle a lawsuit that alleges um, a Portland police officer used excessive force that injured Lund during a 2012 arrest. Well, that's an understatement. The guy broke his ribs. Under the terms of the settlement, Lund has signed a release an indemnity agreement that describes the injury as, quote, accidental, quote, accidental. The only thing that describes this injury as accidental is that indemnity agreement. Nobody else would ever say what happened to this guy is accidental. And notes that it is not, the, not an admission of anything. After a careful examination of the facts and circumstances surrounding Mr. Lund's arrest, Mr. Lund now describes the injury as accidental and not the result of the use of excessive force. City spokesperson person or woman, Jessica Grundin, um, Grundin, said in a statement Tuesday, noting that an internal affairs investigation by the Portland Police Department concluded that Officer Eric McCuster did not use excessive force during the September 19, 2012 arrest. That is BS. If I could use the real word, I would use it. BS. Malarkey, as Joe Biden would say. But one's attorney, Robert Levine told the Bangor Daily News on Tuesday that Lund continues to maintain he was intentionally and unlawfully assaulted. An arrest does not result in broken ribs, people. If you ask him, he's going to say that he was intentionally assaulted. And if you ask me, that is what happened, Levine said. I told him, you and I know what happened and we both know they would have made they would not have made us this offer unless the police officer had done something wrong so internal affairs says he did nothing wrong but yet they pay him a ten thousand dollars even though they should have paid him a whole lot more in june 2014 lund and uh, jeffrey staples of standish filed suit in u.s district court charging my custer with using excessive force when arresting the two men in september 2012 on the night of September 19, 2012, McCuster and another officer were called to railroad tracks off Canco Road after a central main power security guard reported suspicious activity. McCuster and the other officer, along with a police dog, tracked Lund and Staples to the area and found them hiding in tall grass. The two men said they hid because they thought they were being pursued by drug dealers. Officers found a wire cutter at the side of the tracks and arrested Lund and Staples, charging them with possession of burglar's tools. During the arrest, the suit alleged a McCuster handcuffed the two men on the railroad tracks, think about that, threatened them, punched um, Staples in the jaw, Staples is the other guy, in the jaw, and jumped on Lund's back, breaking a rib. Like... Just the fact that they handcuffed them to the railroad tracks is enough that they, both of those officers should have been fired. The one for doing it and the other for allowing it to happen. That's unacceptable. The allegation was that the officer was pissed off that these guys were lying to them about why they were lying in the tall grass late at night. And he goes off on them, Levine said Tuesday. 
Staple subsequently pleaded guilty to the charge, even though police found no DNA on the tools and Staples denied the charge. Levine said because he was sentenced to time served. So um, they worked out a plea agreement where if he would plead guilty, they would release him immediately, um, which is very common. Innocent people often plead guilty because our system is messed up. Lund pleaded not guilty to the charge, and Levine said it was later dismissed, which is the same thing Staples should have done. McCuster's attorney, Michael Cunniff, said Tuesday that Lund's doctors would have testified that his injuries could have resulted from the way he landed on the ground, which Cunniff said occurred before police even found the two men. <laughs> That's just BS. You don't, you don't break a rib because you fall down on the ground. That just, I mean, that doesn't hold muster. Just weeks before the case was scheduled to go to trial, Staples was stopped on April 22 by Portland police and charged with operating after license suspension. Lund was in the vehicle, which was, quote, full of copper, both the line and Conniff said Tuesday. Along with the two men acknowledging they are addicted to heroin, the incident really compromised their case, Levine said. I didn't think the jury, after his, this um, last incident, was going to believe that they weren't copper thieves. Lund accepted the $10,000 offer, the statutory minimum for um, negligence, <clears throat> and signed a release noting that his injuries could be attributed to an accident during the arrest. Um, I just want to note here that even if they were copper thieves, which, you know, they they very well could have been, there's no evidence that that's what they were doing that night, um, and there's no evidence that they stole the copper in this car, but let's just say they were copper thieves. Does that give the officers the right to break Mr. Lund's ribs, to handcuff them to a railroad track, and to jump on their back? That's unacceptable. Even if they are thieves, that's unacceptable. And these officers, so, so let's just take the police so word that these people are thieves. Let's, let's imagine the absolute worst about them. Should have they been treated the way that's described in this allegation? Absolutely not. And the fact that this happened and those officers were not punished, not only were they not punished, but they were given awards for their work on a, a separate incident that year is unacceptable. Groden said city officials believe a jury would have concluded that Lund was not injured, even accidentally, by McCuster, but settled the case as a reasonable compromise of a doubtful and disputed claim and that it avoided the, necessi the necessity of protracted and expensive litigation. That's 100% BS on the part of the city, because number one, their insurance company is the one that's going to litigate it, not them. And number two, they pay the insurance premium regardless of how the case is litigated. So BS, straight, bold-faced lie. Cunniff said the case was carefully scrutinized through the pretrial process and he was confident a jury would have concluded there was no excessive force. McCuster remains a Portland police officer in good standing. Um, Grundon said Tuesday, Lund declined through his attorney to comment on the case. This is absolutely outrageous that this happened. Um, this article says two Cumberland County a men who were arrested nearly two years ago filed a federal lawsuit this week against the Portland police officer claiming he used excessive force and attacked them while they were handcuffed. The two men, Eric Lund of Wyndham and Jeffrey Staples of Standish, allege in a suit filed Tuesday in U.S. District Court in Portland that Officer Eric McCuster threatened them and injured them both after finding them hiding in tall grass near the railroad tracks off Canco Road on September 9, 2012. McCuster's attorney, Michael Cunniff, said he had already been cleared once of any wrongdoing in the 2012 incident following an internal affairs investigation by the Portland Police Department in response to an earlier administrative complaint filed by the men, which internal affairs at Portland Police is a joke, and especially under Chief Michael Soschuk, who was the cover-up chief. Let's just face it. There's another case of... Um, of, uh, of a, a Somali immigrant that was beaten by Portland police officers and her case was covered up. This is very, very defensible case, Cunniff said in a federal court. I say this is not a defensible case and the fact that those officers remain police officers is a disgrace to the badge. Attorney Robert Levine, 
who filed a lawsuit on behalf of Lund and Staples, said he waited to file a suit until Portland police completed their lengthy internal affairs investigation. We went through the process, Levine said. At that point, having been through internal affairs, the only redress was to file a suit. Lund and Staples were both charged in 2012 incident with possession of burglary tools, though they deny it in the lawsuit and um, they were there with intent to commit a burglary. They were not there although they deny in the lawsuit that they were there with the intent to commit a burglary. McCuster and another police officer tracked Lund and Staples using a police dog after receiving a call around 10.30 p.m. from a security officer at Central Maine Power who reported two men walking along the fence line behind the power company's storage yard at 162 Canco Road, according to the lawsuit. The two men were hiding in tall grass thinking they were being pursued by drug dealers, not the police, Levine wrote in a six-page claim seeking an unspecified amount of money. Both men uh, cooperated fully with the police commands, did not resist arrest, nor failed to comply in any way. They put their hands in the air as directed. They were not disrespectful. They did everything they were asked to do. The two men accused McCuster in the lawsuit of threatening to have his partner release the dog to chew his skin off their faces. They also accused McCuster of punching Staples in the face, breaking one of his teeth, and slamming his knee into Lund's side, fracturing his rib. Levine said that Staples, that Staples was held after his arrest on a probation violation and ultimately pleaded guilty to the possession of burglary tools charge for a sentence of time he had already served. Lund pleaded not guilty to the charge against him, and the case was dismissed due to insufficient evidence. You can see how this case is developing. This is just a big um, CYA situation where the Portland Police Department under dirty cop Michael Soschuk covered up blatant abusive um, power and excessive force by these officers. Conniff said he was limited in what he could say while the case is pending under federal court rules and declined to address the specifics of the allegations against McCuster. I will be filing an answer to the complaint on behalf of Officer McCuster probably next week. The answer will categorically deny the conduct alleged in the complaint, Conniff said. I anticipate that the evidence produced over the course of the litigation of the civil lawsuit will exonerate Officer McCuster of the allegations of misconduct. Neither the city of Portland nor the Portland Police Department are named as the defendants in the suit. I mean, this case is absolutely crazy. Um, I have, I pulled up some of his commentations. Oh, they're not directly up, but, but basically the uh, Portland Police Department gave um, Officer McCuster um, several accommodations, several awards, um, the same year that this incident happened for an incident that happened in the old port in Portland, Maine, um, as he responded to protesters. Um, so not only was he not punished for breaking somebody's ribs, for smashing their face in, for breaking a tooth, for handcuffing them to railroad tracks. I mean, can you believe this is happening? These two police officers handcuffed these guys to railroad tracks and they're not punished. The internal affairs found, found they did nothing wrong, like always. And the reason, like I say in all my videos, the reason that these officers were not punished and that they're still working for the Portland Police Department and they're still in good standing is because in Maine, there's zero police accountability. When police screw up and do something as blatantly wrong as this, I mean, imagine if I handcuffed somebody to a railroad track that's torture. There's no other word for it. Torture. And if a train came, what if they lost the key? What if uh, he was fumbling to get him out and he got nervous because the train was coming and he lost the key and he dropped it and he couldn't get the handcuffs off? So many things could have gone wrong. He handcuffed them to railroad tracks. I don't know what else to say about stuff like this. I can't believe this keeps happening. How many more stories am I going to have to cover before Maine wakes up and realizes that they need a citizen oversight committee? You can't leave it to the police to investigate themselves. 
you need a citizen oversight committee so that police officers like this don't have their horrible, evil, dirty deeds covered up, but it's exposed in the light of day and they're punished and lose their jobs for doing stuff like this. There's no scenario where those officers should have kept their jobs. They should have been fired immediately. Prior to Maine denying my PI license, I really was invisible. I just kept to myself. I did my own thing. I worked hard, kept my nose to the ground, um, built up my business, and then boom, I run into a brick wall of corruption up in Maine. If I hadn't have run into that brick wall of corruption, I would not be posting these videos right now. I would not be exposing corruption all throughout Maine government, pervasive corruption from that infects every aspect of the public sector in the Maine state government, from the state police to local sheriff's departments to um, industries where cronyism just runs rampant. In fact, the corruption in Maine is so blatant and in your face, it just surprises me. You know, my life seemed more peaceful and more tranquil prior to knowing that my home state, the state that I love, the state that I want to move back to, the state that I wanted to move my family to, and raise my kids in, is just so corrupt. And I'm speaking to the public officials right now, the public officials, the corrupt and dirty public officials in Maine. All you had to do was give me the PI license and I would have just shut up. I wouldn't have said anything. I would have just moved on with my life. I didn't want this fight. I mean, we have to be the change we want to see in the world. And when you see corruption as bad and as blatant as I see in Maine, what choice do I have? I don't want this for myself, but what choice do I have? I can see by the way that the world's treating me It's not always fair out there You do your best by the rules But they just don't care It's not always fair out there I can see there's tomorrow I believe that I'll pull through But in this moment of injustice I will pray to God my way And when the truth is ignored It's not always fair out there And it's not always fair And soon you'll see When the knife goes in your back And it's not always fair And soon you'll feel When you're living on your own it's not always fair, and soon you'll see when the knife goes in your back. It's not always fair, and soon you'll feel when you're living on your own. And I can see there's tomorrow, and I believe. That I'll pull through And in this moment Of injustice I will pray to God My way and 
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Shout out to the main fusion center, a secret main state police department set up in the wake of 9-11 to spy on terrorists, but now spy on anybody who's a little critical of the state of Maine. They have spied on me, they've spied on um, peaceful protesters, um, they've spied on people that were against a power line going through Maine, they've spied on uh, Black Lives Matter protesters. And they are my most loyal fan. They've watched all my videos, read all my posts. So a big shout out to the Maine State Police Fusion Center. These videos do take a lot of time. I don't make money on them. So if you would not mind, go check out my website, um, nationalsi.com. And um, if you know anybody who does insurance fraud assignments, um, insurance adjusters, lawyers, um, please email me their contact information so that I can reach out to them. Um, I'm in the New England area. I'm licensed um, in uh, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont. I work in Rhode Island and also I'm, I'm down in the south too in Tennessee. Um, uh, so any of those areas are, are great. If you know people that are in the industry, please forward their information. It would be very, very helpful. Um, also check out my store. Um, you can buy cool t-shirts and uh, mugs and different things that help support my work. I just want to get to the truth. That's my goal with every case, with every um, story that I do. And um, the truth and uncovering the truth is very important, no matter where it leads. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare place for you. And if I go and prepare place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also.